Hey boys and girls, this is Niana speaking to you because Nightwise is still asleep. I'm bringing you the Nightwise.com video blog for July 6th. A couple of weeks ago we asked our viewers to make a video about the way they slide. Well, this week a uh, cyberpunk librarian it's a difficult name for me, but he made us a video and we'll show it to you now. Hi, I'm Daniel Messer, the cyberpunk librarian. And this is how I slide at work. I'm a web librarian working in Phoenix, Arizona. I've worked in public libraries for 18 years now, literally half of my life. I got into the library world by accident because in high school, I trained to be a professional theater technician. While doing theater tech is good money, you only work when there's a show in town, and in the meantime, you can starve to death. So I took a job as a shelver in the local public library. I fell in love with the profession soon after that. Moving up, going to college, moving up some more, I wound up working as a circulation supervisor for years. But I've always had a strong technological background, and after 17 years in circulation, I decided to try something new. When the position of web content manager came open, I figured, hey, why not? My desk setup isn't really all that different from most people, but one difference that you would see right away is that I use multiple computers and multiple operating systems. Whereas most people have two or three monitors on their desks, I have two or three laptops, each running a different operating system. One big difference is my standing desk. I have a bad back, so I wind up standing about 80% of the day. I set it pretty wide in my workspace, so I have things everywhere. We're a Microsoft shop, so most of the stuff I do, I do on this machine right here, which is a Dell Latitude running Windows 7. So our library computer system, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, basic code adjustments and stuff like that, I'll probably wind up doing a lot on this computer right here. The laptop's connected to a dock, which goes to this monitor here. It's absolutely massive, and I love it. Unlike most people, I don't want two or three monitors on my desk. I just want one big one. I also use a Linux laptop. This one's running Kombutu 13.04. I use it for basic coding and stuff like that, just when I need a text editor or something. And I also use it for testing because it's a library website. We have to make sure it works on everything. My walking around laptop is this thing right here, the Asus Transformer. It's hooked into the keyboard dock, and that basically makes it an Android laptop. I don't need a lot of power when I'm walking around. I just need something I can get on the web with, write some text, and stuff like that. If I'm working on multimedia or audio, I do that in a studio or on a desktop computer. Since I'm a librarian, it's not surprising that I read a lot. Rather than carrying a bunch of books with me, I carry a cheap Kindle e-ink. Besides that, I also help out with digital downloads and e-content for the library, and this allows me an interface and device to test that stuff with. That's a look at some of the hardware I use throughout the day. I also use a Mac Mini for things like audiovisual recording and editing and stuff like that. But throughout my job and throughout my day, I use a lot of cross-platform open source software to get my things done. So let's take a look at that. Since I work on the web, it's no surprise that I've got a web browser open more or less constantly. Firefox is my go-to browser with almost everything, and no matter what the operating system is, if I'm going to use it, I'm going to install Firefox on it. However, since I have to cross-check pages and make sure they work on all the browsers, I also run Chrome on Windows and Mac, and Chromium on Linux. I like to maintain some privacy in my communications, so I've been trying out a new app called BitMessage. BitMessage is a BitTorrent-based, end-to-end, no-knowledge encrypted email solution that's pretty cool. I'm still learning the ins and outs of it, but I'm impressed with what it does. Now, while I have access to the whole Microsoft Office suite, I find that, even as an author, 
I don't use a lot of the special features in Word. Besides, Office is expensive and I can't take it everywhere like I can LibreOffice. I use LibreOffice on everything and both of my books were written in LibreOffice. It's one of those excellent open source programs that does exactly what I want and it does it extremely well. I'm a musician, so I listen to music almost all the time. Like Firefox, Clementine gets installed on any computer that I'm going to use for extended periods of time. Not only is Clementine a superb MP3 and audio player, but it has built-in capabilities to fire up internet radio stations like Soma FM or Digitally Imported. It even has Spotify tie-ins. I typically add my favorite streams and just rotate through them throughout the day, going from 8-bit video game music to Celtic to chill out and so on. And while it's not open source, Spotify works on everything too. For those times when I not only want to listen to Genesis, but I want to listen to all of Genesis, Spotify is my solution. If you've got the premium subscription, you can even download a Linux client that, ever since I started using it, bears no difference between Mac and Windows and works just as well. I use Photoshop a lot, but I typically use it for the big projects. For quick stuff like cleanups or a swift photo edit, I use GIMP. And while we're talking Adobe versus open source, I use Dreamweaver frequently, but I also use Blue Griffin, a YZWig HTML designer and editor. It runs on everything too, so it doesn't matter what, I'm, what machine I'm standing in front of, my HTML, PHP, ASP, and JavaScript code is right there in front of me. Occasionally, I put together audio bits for the site or for various library projects. I suppose I could use Audition or something, but Audacity works so well that I just don't see any reason to switch. To this day, Audacity still has one of the best noise reduction and hiss removal capabilities I've ever seen. I've used it for everything from podcasting to recording separate audio for video projects. You'll find that librarians aren't too into secrets, but sometimes we do have to maintain the security of passwords, patron data, and stuff like that. Since I modify and update websites, I have quite a few passwords to protect. Now, in Firefox, I use LastPass, but when I need to keep a password really safe, I have a double lock mechanism in place for that. My first line of security is TrueCrypt, which once again works on Linux, Mac, Windows, and you know, everything like that. Anything I need to secure typically goes in an encrypted container locked down by TrueCrypt. For secure passwords, I use KeePass, a password vault app. The great thing about KeePass is that you can create a secure password vault and then stuff that vault into an encrypted TrueCrypt blob. It locks it down both ways. And that's just some of the ways I slide at work from platform to platform. All of the software I just mentioned, I use on every computer from the Windows laptop to Kubuntu to the Mac Mini. There's sort of a harmony between being a librarian and using open source software. But from the basis practical standpoint, it's really useful to have all of my tools available to me, no matter which operating system or which computer I'm using. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, that's all for this week on the nightwise.com video blog. I've seen that my co-host has taken care of business. Somebody has to do it. Okay, well, I was sleeping in. I hope you enjoyed the video of Cyberpunk Librarian, who is uh, showing us how he slides at work. I was really impressed with what he sent us, and you too <coughs> can send us a video and a submission on how you use technology uh, for you and uh, use your own hack t hacks, hacks tips. I'm not awake yet. <laughs> I'm not awake yet. <laughs> oh, you can use your own hacks, tips, and tweaks and share them with other cross-platform geeks. I'm really not awake yet. No. No. No, you're not. No. Perhaps you should do it next time. Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, should, would you make I a better... think the viewers would like that. No, I think they would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you guys uh, next week. Until then, well, let technology work for you. Bye. Bye. I'm bringing to you the nightwise.com video blog for the 6th of July. Ah, nu zit ik weer mis. Ik was zo'n dag, ik moet jullie laten.